Amen. It's going to be a wonderful time. That'll be a week from Easter. Our guests will be free, um, and it'll be great. So we're going to have a fun time. Also, deadline is tomorrow for any ladies who plan on attending our district ladies conference in Springfield, Missouri. I want you to remember that. And praise the Lord. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise Brother Tom uh, would come, and Brother Swords, we're going to receive our offering tonight. Amen. If you have that ready, why don't you just go ahead and bring that up. Amen. As unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to have all of our guests here with us today. Good to have Aaron and Aaron and Michael. God bless them. Amen. Glad to have Tabitha here today. Tabitha, God bless you. Amen. So glad to have all of our guests here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, pastor's going to come and, and uh, give us the word and we're just going to listen to it, and we're going to not just listen to it and let it go from here to here. We're going to let it go from here and just stop. I don't want to be an April Fool. I want to let that word stay in there. Amen. Amen. Pastor, would you come, please? Something in the atmosphere tonight. I uh, felt it when I walked in the prayer room. Yeah. It's nothing less than the very essence of God. Um, just like a, a radio on a frequency, you know, you, you know. Sometimes you try to adjust it, and, and the signal doesn't come in very clear, but other times it comes in real strong. And I felt a very strong presence of God tonight. You know, we're, we're blessed that in our humanity... Uh, we have to deal with uh, human things, but yet we are spirit too. And so that's the wonderful thing, that our spirit can connect with God's spirit in such a way that our flesh and brain doesn't understand. Right. I don't think we'll ever be able to, to fully comprehend uh, the creature that God made us. It's, uh, we, we, we are marvelously made. Praise God. I'm going to step down tonight. <clears throat> Praise God. All the children are going to stay in tonight? That's fine. That's fine. Normally, this is our evangelistic service, but due to youth convention, we're moving it out to next week. Okay. Richard, my good man, it's good to see you tonight. What happened to you Sunday? I had a heart attack. And what else happened to you? And you what? I got the Holy Ghost. And he got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Yes. And he wants to get baptized Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Excited for you, Richard. Because we... You know, we can't, uh, or we really don't have the time to tell you, but it's just the most amazing, incredible experience that 
will ever happen in your life and the things that will happen as a result of it, we don't have time to tell you. But just live it, do it, and God will just reward you, not only in this life, but in the life to come is what's all important. Hallelujah. Well, tonight I wanted to uh, take a few moments uh, to address the subject that uh, I feel like we need to discuss. Um, it's not always the easiest subject to talk about, but I think it's, it's one that we need to approach and look at it in a little different perspective in order for the, the Word of God uh, to really be a blessing to us. You know, there's some things in the Word of God we, we want to kind of push to the side. We, we do. That's just part of our human nature. We say, well, I, yeah, that's in the Word of God. That's good. But, you know, uh, it's, it's how I want to believe it or it's how I want to practice it. And, uh, uh, you know, this is really not for some private interpretation. The Word of God is given for all mankind for us to have the same understanding as which God gave it. And that's really what it takes. It takes the Spirit Amen. To give us that understanding. That's the reason we preached a little bit about it Sunday, about when you receive the Holy Ghost. That's you, you get a built-in mentor that's right. Amen. That's right. that leads you, guides you, directs you, helps you with all your decision-making. But you've got to be led of the Spirit to mind the things of the Spirit. Amen. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I've heard people say, I got the Holy Ghost, but they do right the opposite of what the Spirit says to <laughs> We, we have to be willing to totally submit ourselves unto God. Uh, and we'll, we'll preach about that this coming Sunday. <laughs> that we've got to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow Him. Yes. That's, that's what's got to happen in this process. It's not that one day I woke up and said, I'm a believer now. Amen. No, it's, you, you don't just wake up in a brand new world saying, I'm a believer. Uh, it's, it's a process it's, it's, uh, that brings us to, to believe, and that is a rock-solid foundation that, uh, for us to build our lives on. And so I said those few things here because I, I want to talk on the subject tonight about giving. Giving is uh, a really a wonderful thing that God has uh, blessed us with the opportunity to participate in, and there is no one who has given any more than God Himself. And if we're wanting to be like Him, and I trust that we do, that uh, we want to learn to be givers. Now, automatically, everybody saw dollar signs, didn't you? <laughs> giving is more than money. Giving does include money, but giving is far more than money. Um, in uh, Psalms 109 and verse 4 it says, For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. Uh, and, and we have to do that. We have to uh, consciously uh, give ourselves to God in prayer. It's not because uh, Brother Billingsley's coming and harassing Brother Andre. He said, Brother Andre, you got to pray. Man, you need to pray a couple hours every day. You just need to just... And, and he does it out of obligation. That's not going to help a lot. But when he gets in his spirit, and he does, amen, that desire and that understanding that I need to pray and the importance of prayer and all the aspects of prayer, then we want to give ourselves to prayer. Amen. When we, we understand that we have this uh, conversation with God on a, on a daily basis, we commune with him, he listens, he he, uh, he delights in giving us good things and blessed things, uh, then it causes us to, uh, to continuously come back and, and say, Father, I thank you, and uh, I'm just uh, asking you just keep walking with me and helping me and directing me and supplying the needs that I have and, uh, and enabling me to do the work and the will of God. Amen. Amen. And so it comes to the place that you have to be willing to give yourself. I didn't give media my scripture, but I think media is going to help me <laughs> when, they, when, when they get there. But we'll go to uh, Matthew chapter 5 to begin with here tonight. Uh, 
Well, here we are right in the middle of Holy Week. So much happened during this week about 2,000 years ago. And uh, we're, we're thankful for that week. We are benefits of what happened during that week. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're not really to esteem one day above the other, but keep every day holy. But historically speaking, we're, we're talking about it being Holy Week. And uh, so it's, it's those few days that, that led up to the crucifixion and the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a good time to be alive, isn't it? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 42. <clears throat> These are the words that Jesus spoke. He said, Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. See, that's an easy scripture for us to, to want to dismiss. Now, I'm not talking about us doing something uh, irresponsible. I'm not talking about doing something foolish. Uh, I'm speaking about what Jesus was telling us that we would do uh, to help those that we personally know that there's a legitimate need and we could help with that situation. This is not standing on the street corner and say, anybody need a 20? That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, th this is in the, in the earnest part of, uh, of sincere situations that uh, we are confronted with. And, and there will be times, and I'm going to tell you this, if you haven't already experienced it, there will be times that the Lord will test you. <clears throat> there, there has been times that I've helped people when in, in myself I really didn't want to, but yet I knew the Lord wanted me to, and I said, I'll do it for you, Lord. Amen. I'll do it because you're, you're directing me. And I, I don't understand uh, <laughs> how this is going to make a difference. But I'm doing it because I feel the leading of your spirit. Amen. Now, have I ever regretted that? No. Did they always do the right thing? No. But it wasn't about them. It was about me. It was a test in my life as to what I was going to do and how I was going to handle it. Now, what happens is that God allows these situations to happen to really to develop in us His character so that we can really, really, really be more like Him. Amen. And uh, I really want to be like Him. Everybody else, you want to be like Jesus? Amen. Well, th these are some, uh, some things that do challenge us in our life. These are not the easiest things to do. Hey, I know it's easier for you to write out your electric bill than it is to give to somebody that just freely give it to them. Come on, everybody agree? That's easier to do that. But, but when you... <clears throat> But, but when you're freely doing it, or the Lord is leading you to do it, uh, it, it has a greater depth to it. And what I'm saying is there are uh, things that will happen as a result of your obedience to, to the Lord that uh, it's just amazing what God does and what He will do for you and your personal life and your personal experience if you'll let Him because He, he is actually developing you. Now, let's read a few more verses. Let's just don't stop there. He said, you've heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Challenging, challenging. <clears throat> Bless them that curse you. See, everything in here is not easy. But it is right. It is good. It is profitable. And so when we learn to, to do these things, then we learn to be like Jesus because there, there is no one uh, that loved any more than he loved. Amen. Greater love hath no man than this. Come on, we want love. We want, we want the greatest of love. We want the love of God to be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It's not just our human emotional love 
We want the love of God at work. Everybody with me? Because, because God, God wants to use His love in you to bless others that in turn bless you. But that's how God works. He, he wants us to do it first. That's the testing that He'll put us through. Now, and don't think for a moment it's just once or twice. It's going to be as often as needed until we can reach that place that we can be sensitive to God and obey God and not question God. See, I was telling you in, the, in some of the earlier times, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I was reluctant. I was hesitant. I, I wanted to obey God, but, uh, you know, uh, there were some things in my spirit and attitude that needed to be worked out. It's like, but God, I, I worked long and hard for that money. And it's like God would, would, you know, later remind me, yeah, but who gave you life and who gave you energy and who gave you opportunity and, and, and who do you belong to anyway? You're not your own. Does, does God need to get in our face and say, you're not your own? Does God need to do that once in a while? Does he need to point his finger and say, you're not your own? I think we do need to re be reminded. But I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. <laughs> that, uh, I was speaking to Sister Giselle about the dentist and I said I was in a dentist office last week for three hours. I, I uh, feel like I really need to pray for that dentist. <laughs> felt a little rough yes but you know what I mean there are those that um, that do things uh, and some of them do it intentionally because they want to provoke you they just want to harass you it's going to happen I'm, I'm here telling you tonight it's going to happen but it's not about their response. It's about your response. It's how you handle it. It's what you do about it. It's what you say. It's how you think. It's, it's all about you and your response in relationship to the Holy Ghost. And so we, uh, the Lord is, is telling us here. Uh, he said, I'm telling you. Hmm? Now what is, but I say unto you. Love your enemies. And we say, oh, that is, Lord, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great expectation. No, it's not just a great expectation. That's, that is his will. People wonder what the will of God is. Here it is. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? 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 <laughs> Next verse. Verse 45. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Now, that's a good reason. <clears throat> For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them that love you, what reward have you? Do you not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, which means whole or complete, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. In other words, our Christianity is not complete until we can practice this. Am I losing somebody here? <clears throat> are you with me, Brother Andre? <laughs> Brother Barry, are you with me? Okay. Well, 
we want this we want the word to affect us this is not something that's going to strangle us this is something that's that's going to help us but we, we've got to understand that these things are 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 taught by the lord and, and given to us that we may be partakers of christ we're not just partakers in this death, burial, and resurrection. We're partakers in all aspects of Christ. Okay, we'll go to Matthew chapter 10. Read a couple of verses here. Verses 10 and verse 8. Matthew 10, 8. Jesus says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast the devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Again, we're not just talking about uh, uh, money here. We're talking about what God has blessed us with. And we need to be able to give out. We're, we're not just like the Dead Sea. We take it all in. No, we got to give out. And um, whatever giftings or talents you have, you need to share it. Because if you say, well, it's, it's my gifting, my talent, I'll, I'll control it. Well, if you try to control it, God can't use it. You have to let God do it. And, when, and God's saying, you know, uh, this is the place and this is the time. And that's, that's how we learn uh, to be obedient, submissive to God. Because oftentimes He will ask us to do things that may be an inopportune time for us. But it is his way of helping us to. And so I use these words freely, freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. So he's all about more than money, isn't he? Nor scrap for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who is. This is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, neither hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And so, we understand everybody's not going to receive our witness. We understand that. Didn't everybody say, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you starting today and never going to quit? No, you find that there was actually, there were multitudes that came out, but there were multitudes that went away. My, it seems to me after feeding several, several thousands of people miracle food that they should have been Trying to get into that little upper room. <laughs> or the thousands that were healed. I say thousands, I don't know, but apparently there were thousands because there was many times, and he healed them all. And just because that does happen doesn't cause people to, to step up and say, hey, I'm going to follow you, Lord, with everything and with all that I've got, all. But that's what he wants. But we have to learn some of these very simple disciplines in our life in order for God, amen, to have uh, the preeminence in us that he would become all in all in us. Sometimes we think it's just, you know, it's just those top three or four things we got to do and that's it. No, it's more than two or three things. It's more than, than just five or six things. There's things that we do as a whole that we can be complete in Christ. That's right. It's a lifestyle. <clears throat> Mark chapter 10. Folks, if you'll stay with me, we'll try to be through in 15 minutes. Is that okay? We understand. 
We understand. <laughs> Clearly communicated. We understand. We understand. No punch intended. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou likest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and take up the cross and follow me. Now, uh, in this particular instance, sometimes we think it's just all about the money, but it was more than that. He, he was saying, Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast. And, and so what is it that we might have that's not considered dollars and cents? A lot of things. It's a lot of things. And then he, he went on to say, and give to the poor. Now, maybe this man would have felt different if he could have said, well, uh, why don't you let me, uh, you know, make a donation to the local hospital and we'll give them a half a million dollars and and then we'll, we'll put, a, you know, another half a million dollars in feeding the poor in this city. And, you know, we'll, but it can't be our way. The emphasis here is, is that this man had to do what Jesus asked him to do directly. And he complimented the man mildly because he said, there's only one thing that thou lockest. And apparently it was in his spirit and in his attitude. You know, we have an attitude toward money. We have attitude toward time. We have attitude toward materialism. It's a lot of things. But he told him if he did this, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Would it be fair to say here that it may have been a whole lot better if he had a whole lot less? Really, how much better off are we with more? What do you want? You want more stress? You want a stroke, a heart attack, a nervous breakdown? What was that? Walt Disney had, what, three bankruptcies and four nervous breakdowns or so before he ever built Disneyland? Was it worth it? <laughs> the man went away grieved. He, he must have, uh, he, he must have something just been gnawing in his soul. Oh, I, I, I want treasure in heaven, but I, oh, I got all this earthly stuff. And Jesus looked around about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Again, we've got to go beyond dollars. I'm talking about uh, just the spirit of giving. I believe that the Lord wanted this man to become a giver. I believe the Lord wants us to become givers. I mean, I believe that we are givers, but I'm talking about in the, in the fullest definition of, of Christ. Spirit in us of being a giver. And the disciples were astonished at his words. They were taken back a little bit. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard is it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? There's a very key issue right here. Is that we cannot afford to put our trust in and material things. We brought nothing into this world and we're not going to take anything out. It's only here for us to use and to use it for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. Now, how do we want to leave this world? Oh, we don't want to talk about that right now, Pastor. <laughs> we, do 
That's right. We want to leave here pleasing God. So it doesn't matter whether we leave, leave here and we leave behind two million or we leave two cents. What difference does it make? I, I'm not saying that there, there can't be some good planning where you, you, you can bless somebody or you can bless the kingdom after you're gone. I know that that's possible. And you've heard Pastor talk about it. I think it's a, it's a wise thing and it's a recommended thing if you'd include the kingdom of God in your estate planning. I didn't say somebody. I said the kingdom. And so he went on to say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You know the church is Lay of the sea of they reached that place they was rich and increased with goods and have needed nothing. And yet the Lord said, You're wretched, miserable, poor, you're blind, you're you just don't get it. And they were astonished out of measure. Now he already shocked them once. I mean, verse 24 said they were astonished at his words, and now again, and they were astonished out of measure. There had to be some depth going on here. And what was happening in the illustration that Jesus was bringing by this one man. He could enter heaven if he would just do one thing. And it involved the things that he had control of. Sometimes we think, oh, I, I, don't, I don't have any treasure. I mean, my, my neighbor down the road, he's got all the big stuff. I'm just a little guy on the block here. <laughs> That's not how God looks at it. God looks at all of us on a very individual basis. So they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, because he read their hearts, With men it is impossible, but with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Now, this is not the, the, the end of this conversation. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Hey, that's what we want to stand and testify. Oh, I've given all to God. Have we? Sometimes we let the enemy convince us that we've let God bankrupt us. Somebody help me out here. Yeah. The enemy step up. Oh, you're giving too much to the kingdom. You're, you're supporting too many missionaries. You're yeah, given to save our children. Come on. What we fail to understand sometimes is that when we give in that little offering to save our children, God of heaven is looking to save our children, our grandchildren, and our great grandchildren. It's a principle involved. It has far-reaching ramifications that we can't understand in that little moment that God has just moved on us to, to contribute to the kingdom. And sometimes it's, it's an individual affair. It may be a, a sacrifice, and it may not be, but whatever it is, if you're obeying God, God's saying, I could take this little and I can make a lot out of it. Send by, by your willingness to be a giver, I can save your neighbor's kids. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospels, but he shall receive. Somebody tell me what that word, next word is. A hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions in the world to come. Eternal life. We don't have this spiritual formula all worked out, but God does. The things that we don't always fully understand, but our understanding is I don't know why, Sister Lannis, but the Lord's moving on me to, to do something a little extra this time. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
What do I do? What am I supposed to do? Okay. Well, well, what if I don't have, have that in my account to write it out? What do I do? What do I do? We find a way. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You say, oh, it's going to be a sacrifice. Oh, no. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Luke 638. Still got five minutes. These are the words of Jesus. He says, give. Look at your neighbor and say, give. Come on, tell your neighbor, Jesus said, give. I'm telling you, Jesus said it. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Let me pause right here. Because when we give to God, we should never, ever expect something in return. Now, we can't pay him for what he's done, but we're given because we love him. That should be the motivating factor is that we love him. We love the lost. We're partnering with him. Come on, we become his hands and his feet. Well, how does that work? Well, what's in your wallet belongs to him. But it's your hands that takes it out and puts it in his hands. Is that simple enough? Give and it shall be given unto you. And he said it would be good measure. You believe that? And he said it would be pressed down. It would be shaken together. Running over. And then he says, shall men give into your bosom. See, we are thinking God's going to return it. Now, he orchestrates things. But when that, that unexpected blessing comes, you say, wow, I didn't expect this. And God's smiling. Because he, he's moved on somebody else that's, that understands to give. Because you gave, he moved on somebody else to give to, give to you. There's a reaction taking place here. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, again, we're not just talking about dollars here. I want everybody to clearly understand that. We're talking about you, you giving mercy to somebody. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We, we have to be careful that we don't become cruel. We're talking about the nature of Christ here. And that if we can forgive people their trespasses, then He's going to forgive us our trespasses. Yes. And so there, there are several things here of what we could do in giving. Yes. Sometimes you just need to give people a little time and space and patience and maybe just a helpful word or a helpful hand or whatever you can do. It may not be that you could write them a check. That may not meet the need at all. Right. But God has a way. Of, of us being obedient to Him to make sure that we're taken care of. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. You, know, you don't have to lay in your bed and you know, twiddle your thumbs all night and say, oh, how's this going to work out? Your Father knows what you have need of even before you ask. And it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But the point is we've got to do our part. And I want to do mine, don't you? Amen. All right. Quickly going to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, 
necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You ought to make that your verse for the next 24 hours. Yes. Amen. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. That's, that's kind of what I was talking about a moment ago, and uh, is that I've been praying about what to, what to give in Sunday's offering. And uh, I come up with a number. And then God came up with a number. <laughs> So I plan on doing what God's put in my heart. But do we intentionally do these things? You know, there's, you know, you're, you're part of the kingdom of God, and there's all kinds of needs, all kinds of needs. And there's always going to be financial needs. Even in a local church here, we have financial needs. You know, we, we had a $750 light bill last month, $450 gas bill, and that's just the beginning. There are needs. Everybody understands that, right? No, we had a furnace to go out. We had to replace it. And, uh, and we, we've got, we just got needs. They're everywhere. And uh, we're not here uh, trying to burden you and strap you with all these situations, but we're just letting, you know, you know that we, it just takes a certain amount just to, uh, for us to come and, and smile, have a move of the Holy Ghost, you know, and reach the lost. And so uh, we, we want to do the right thing. So every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, not of necessity. That's, a, that's how we look at, oh, there's such a great need. And sometimes it's presented as a need, and there are, are needs, but I'm not, I don't want to give it just because it's a need, because there's a thousand more. I want to, I want to give because God has blessed me to give. That's how you ought to look at it, if you're able to. If you're not... You ought to say, Lord, hey, I want to get in on this. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the smallest that I've got, but I'm going to increase it and increase it and increase it. Come on, there's a lesson in that. And in that process, God will bless you and multiply you and, and give to you because it's, it's His Word. God loves a cheerful giver. Look at your neighbor and say, are you cheerful? And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God has given to us very liberally. So I haven't finished, but I'm going to stop. We need, uh, we need the Spirit of the Lord working in us. And, and when... He works in us, and it takes out the fear factor. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know that it's necessary that I say this, but I'm going to say it. It's not, it's not usually the case that God says, reach in your pocket and get your wallet. Now empty it. Now, he could, but that's normally not the case. Because he, he wants you to be a responsible person and pay your bills. But the Lord's saying, I blessed you a little bit above measure. And that, and there's a reason why I did that. And that is for me. And that's what we need not forget tonight. Is that that difference that he's blessed us with is that he would like to have some of it back. Because he's got a world he's trying to save. And so if, if we can practice that, everything's going to be all right. Everything will be healthy. And you and I will be blessed and everything's going to be taken care of. I just read it to you, the last couple of verses. It's, it's God's Word. It's, it's inevitable. But we have to reach that place that we practice the Word of God till we experience it. Say, hey, I see how this works now. Anybody, anybody got it figured out? <laughs> Man, I have it all figured out, but you got part of it figured out, right? Amen. You, got a, you got a pretty good handle on it? Anybody got a pretty good handle on it? You just raise your hand and say, I think I got a handle on it. Amen. All right, that's a good majority here tonight. Amen.
Praise God. Stand with us for a moment. That, uh, that will conclu <coughs> conclude my Bible study. So while you're standing for about a minute and a half, I want to just uh, uh, take this opportunity to remind us that there's several that did sign up for M31. M31 is a great uh, opportunity for our church to give it to the kingdom of God without taking money out of your pocket. And that is the primary reason that we uh, launched this particular uh, project is that we can ask other people to help us uh, to give to missions. Now, those that would take the challenge, and we had 22 signed up, and some uh, are probably not still on the list, but we'd like to hear from you in a recommitted way. If you'll, those that meet the challenge to get 31 people to give $31, that will be $961 that would be given to the work of the kingdom, and you didn't give a dime of it. But you gave something. You gave your time, maybe a few postage stamps, a few little things, phone calls, texts, whatever you did. And uh, wouldn't that be amazing if we could get 10 people to do that? What would that, what would that be equivalent to? If we could just get 10 people in this house tonight. Nearly $10,000. Have we ever done that before? No, we have never done that. But I think God wants to move us into another dimension. I think we can do it. I'm really a believer in it myself. Now, as your pastor, I've been, I've been working at it, but I haven't been working hard enough, so I'm going to work harder. These next 60 days are very, very important days. And so I'd like to encourage you to do it. If you need some help, get with Sister Billingsley and I. We'll help you. We'll help you write letters, notes, whatever you need to do to solicit if that's what you want to do. We want to do it the proper way. And then um, we'll get this project on board. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I've, I've got about half of mine fulfilled. And uh, I'm hoping in 60 days to get it all fulfilled, almost to the point that if I don't, I'm going to make up the difference myself. I'm committed to this. Okay? And so uh, we like to see some, some progress in the next 60 days. It's very important because uh, this summer is going to zip by. This is already April, folks. <laughs> we started in October. <clears throat> Brother Andre, why don't you come pray over us tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your guidance. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you didn't leave us in this world to figure it out on our own. But you gave us instruction. You gave us a path. You gave us your wisdom and your love and your spirit in us to guide us. Lord Jesus, help us to hear that voice. Help us to be led, Lord Jesus by that still, quiet voice that you put in us, that, Lord, that we may please you, that, Lord, that we may bless your kingdom, that, Lord, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Lord Jesus, help us and guide our steps, our efforts, our thoughts, that, Lord, that we would give you glory in all things, that, Lord, that we would absolutely make a difference in this life, in this time for your kingdom. Bless the word, Lord Jesus, in our hearts that it would stay, it would grow, it would change us forever for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable God.